Hello everyone, in today's Logic Pro tutorial, I wanna show you a really simple way you can build out and manage chords for you guys that don't have a MIDI keyboard and maybe your music theory isn't as spot on as you want it to be. You can still get creative and still build out these more complex things using the tools in Logic. Let's dive straight into it. So the project that I've got here is a whip. Don't expect to hear a completely finished track. It's something I'm working on, but it's a great example to show you the idea. As you can see here, we've got our piano roll open and we've got some chords in and we are just using these. For anyone curious on the sound we're about to use, it is Crosstalk Piano uh, and it is a preset amp circuit board and it sounds like this. And those chords introduced to the track are like this. First thing I'm gonna do is duplicate this instrument so we can just start from scratch. I'll show you how to set up each individual part. So I do Command and D, that will duplicate the track for me and duplicate my sound and we'll mute this guy out. Simple way to get into your piano roll, have the track that you want selected. So just click on it like so, press E, that's gonna bring up your editor. If you don't see the piano roll by default, it might be on score, step sequencer or session player at the top. Just choose yourself piano roll. Now, one thing that I like to do when working in this particular way is use my secondary tool up here. So I have the first one left as the pointer, which is like so. Then when I press command, it will switch to the brush tool. To do this, we Click on here and we can go down and choose the brush tool. If you wanted to just use your main tool as the brush tool, you can press T and just change it by tapping B and that will now be the brush tool as well. If you want to get back to the arrow, just double tap T and it'll bring it back to the pointer for you every single time. The track we're working in, we've chosen a key. I've worked from a sample. You can see the viola sample up the top, F sharp minor. So we are going to set our chords that can be used to be in that key so we can't fall out of it, which helps us with our theory. It does mean we are limited on some forms of inversions and things that would necessarily be out of key but would work, but that's way more advanced theory. And if you already know those things, this isn't the video for you. So what we do over here, we first need to set ourselves a pattern so we can go up here and just draw ourselves in a pattern like so. If that doesn't work for you, secondary tool, pencil up here. I'm going to draw that in and just drag it in there so it's about four bars long. We go over to our scale quantize and in our case we want to choose F sharp and we are natural minor. If you want to limit yourself to just the five notes, if you're doing like a pop record, uh, put that onto minor pentatonic. It'll bring it down to just those five notes in that key for you. Super, super easy. Everything you do always works that way. This gives us a bit more flexibility. In terms of our time quantize, the way this track works, it's kind of ebbing and flowing over every two bars because we're at 174 BPM. That feels about one bar. We can't do a time quantize of that size, but we can do a one-to-one -one note and then drag them out. It's the easiest way for us to work here. And now when we want to draw those in, I'm gonna lead off of the F sharp. Because it's the key we're in, if it's our first chord and our first key, it's generally gonna work with all the samples and sounds. So our F sharp is gonna be this note right here. So if I hold command, I've got my brush tool and I can draw in my F. Now a really easy way to be, build chords up is to skip every other note in your progression, in your scale. So here we're in F sharp, natural minor. There's all those notes within it that we can use, but if we skip every other one, we're gonna build out a nice chord sound. We're gonna break that rule by the time we get to the second chord, but you'll see why. Today's video is sponsored by DistroKid. They let me get my music out to all of the major distributors and they do that at a price an independent artist can easily afford. If you're ready to get your music or beats out there and want to release an unlimited amount of music each year, check the link in the description below for a discount off of your first year of unlimited distribution with DistroKid. So what we can do here, if we hold the brush tool and we try and put this next note in here, you'll see we can't actually draw anything in. If we go to one above, we can, and that's because we're scaled into this F natural minor over here. If we bring that up, if we bring that up to the A sharp, we'll notice the little Q pops on over here. That's letting us know we brought that note off scale and it's gonna bring it back into scale if we touch that. So what we can do is have something like this. And 
I'm going to bring those down an octave. So I'm going to do shift option and down. Now remember how I said leaving a gap? Well, the next note in our scale would be the G sharp here. That is in the F sharp minor scale, but we're going to skip that note. So we're actually going to end up bringing it to here, which is A, which gives us this. Really nice harmonically, like right together, right? Now, if we bring it back down, they overlap a bit. They just sit far nicer together. We'll apply the same rule and we'll end up here on C sharp. We've built a lovely chord out. Now, because we're on our arrow tool, we can select all three notes and just go to the end and drag them out over our two bars. Beautiful. Now on the next one, I want to drop down, but only by one note and maintain the rest of that overall chord. So I'm going to use the brush tool and put these two in here again, and then bring this one note down like so. As you see, if I try and click here, which isn't in our scale, note of F, it's going to automatically drop it down for us. We'll do the same again and drag that out over the two bars. Now in this instance, the one bar and then the second bar, we have another note drop down because of the way the tracks are in. We've got that two bars and then one bar, one bar, two bars, and that's the overall rhythm of the track. And all I'm going to do here is just drop the note down a second time. That's adding more of like a melody, but harmonizing with the rest of the chord. So for the next two bar, I'm gonna go, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna lead off of the F sharp again. We're gonna maintain the same note above, but we're gonna go one note above here instead. So we went one note down, so we went one note down, now we're gonna go one note up. Same principle, take it all, drag it along. And I'm going to do that same technique that I did just a moment ago. So we're going to bring it down one note, maintain here, maintain here. And we use that same lower note again, like so. And there we've built out our chord progression. Had a little bit of compression on the overall sound just to lift it up. And then put it in context of the track. And that, guys, <clears throat> and that, guys, is a really simple way that you can introduce complex chord progressions in Logic without a keyboard and without knowing all of the music theory that you might need to still get your creative ideas out there. And when your track is finished, you can make use of the channel sponsor, which is DistroKid, to get your music out to all those major streaming platforms. For more information on that and a discount off your first year, check the link in the description below. Thank you very much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in future videos. Take care.